my name is Jorge Ursua. Uh, I'm a computer engineer. I'm a PH, uh, PhD student uh, at the Freie Universität uh, Berlin. Um, the name of my talk is Logical Representation of Plurality and Scientific uh, Dispute Applied to the Controversy Generated by the book Tad uh, Or Troya, written by Professor uh, Kolb. Uh, my presentation uh, is composed of two parts. In the first part, uh, I want to uh, introduce an argumentative system that I implement as part of my PhD. And in the second one, uh, I want I try to validate my system with a use case. And the use case uh, are, uh, is the arguments uh, of Kolb against uh, the point of view of Korfman uh, related to uh, Troy and the uh, uh, and the Tübingen excavations. Hmm? Okay, in order uh, to introduce my argumentative system, I want to try to describe a uh, ontological, uh, a philosophical concept, ontological relativism, because that is the background of my system. If we observe this picture, uh, we can see, uh, or we can say that uh, this is a planet, and that, that this planet has uh, four moons. Hmm? What would happen if, if from other perspective, for example, uh, someone else observe, observe exactly the same planet and he see uh, this picture, so that the same planet had only one moon? Uh, if we observe the same planet in the same time from other uh, point of view, uh, we could see, for example, something like that. And here we see that the planet has uh, five moons, yeah? and there are two individuals observing this object. Who is right, who is wrong? We cannot say who is wrong or who is right, but we can deduce from this example that uh, the interpretation or, or the uh, the interpretation of the observation or the point of view uh, depend. Uh, sorry, that the belief from a, a particular uh, point of view depend of the position around the object. Okay, uh, three. Uh, we can deduce three ideas from this example. Uh, we can deduce three ideas from this example. The first one is that uh, the more viewpoints we have around an, uh, uh, around an object, the better we can describe it. And it's not possible to describe an object perfectly because the, there is an infinite number of viewpoints around it. Mm. And the last one is, uh, is that a, a context is always consistent. It means that a belief and its semantic negation cannot coexist within the same context. And by the way, I try to define context in the scope of uh, this project. Context is a set of uh, axioms that are asserted from a particular point of view. Okay, now I want to quote uh, a phrase that uh, I found uh, in a paper related to the project Wikidata. And it says uh, it say that uh, it would be naive to expect global agreement on the true data since many facts are disputed or are simple and certain. Okay, the goal of my, my argumentative system are three. The first one is the representation of plurality or different viewpoints, the representation of arguments, and a, a tool or a way for the improvement of the data. Okay, uh, the solution that I propose uh, to reach this goal is uh, to have an argumentative system that have a only one knowledge base. And for each individual, uh, there is a context. Uh, a context is completely isolated from the other context, although uh, one person can, uh, uh, also the, the people can uh, speak about the uh, common objects. A context is composed in this case uh, for a set of, uh, of terminological axioms and a set of assertional axioms. Uh, I am using the language, uh, the description logic uh, to represent knowledge. Yeah? Therefore, I take uh, this concept from uh, the description logic. And uh, in the same context for each individual, there is an argumentative network. In the argumentative network, I try uh, to describe uh, the, the justific uh, how uh, a belief is justified, uh, what are the argu arguments that justify a belief. And, uh, uh, and I have a common interpretation function for all the context. In this way, I will be able, although there are different ontologies and different beliefs, I can recognize immediately when there is a semantic uh, contradiction. Now, uh, a description of the argumentative network. 
in my argumentative network, there are two ways to justify uh, a belief. In the first, uh, the first one, I call it a direct argument, and it is a representation of an observation. If I observe something, uh, I get a belief, uh, I, I have an interpretation of this observation, and in my system, what I say is that I have a belief, and uh, I justify this belief by a direct argument. Uh, the second one, the indirect uh, argument, uh, represent an uh, inference, a deduction. Uh, for example, uh, uh, yeah, and the indirect, uh, uh, indirect argument is composed always of a terminological axiom, I call here a rule, and a set of uh, assertional axioms, I call them belief. And, uh, when I infer something, I have a conclusion, and this conclusion is a belief as well. Mm -hmm. There are the two ways to justify um, belief. And a belief will stay in a context how slo uh, as long as I have argument that justify this belief. A, be uh, a belief can have until one direct argument, one observation, and an uh, 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 infinite set of uh, indirect arguments. Okay, now let's go to the use case. Okay, uh, the book, uh, Tat or Troya, uh, in this book, uh, Professor Kolf tried to summarize his argument against the Kolfman thesis. A warning, also my argumentative, uh, my argumentative system uh, is not going to say who is right. And it doesn't question the intentionality of the statement. It's just, a, an, uh, it's just an uh, analyze of the contradiction between the thesis asserted by Professor Kolf and Professor uh, Kaufman, and their corresponding argumentation. Okay, in this picture, I try to summarize the viewpoint of Professor Kaufman. Of course, it's impossible to do that in a diagram, but uh, in the top, uh, I have the statement that Troy, uh, so Kaufman thought that Troy had a supra-regional importance. And this statement is based on uh, three arguments. That is, yeah. Uh, the first one is the site of Troy. Uh, he thought that Troy uh, was a large city for this time. Uh, for that, there is many uh, uh, arguments or evidence from excavations. Uh, he thought as well uh, that uh, Troy was attacked repeatedly at this time. And uh, the last argument is that Troy was a commercial metropolis. Okay, let's focus now in the, uh, in the last uh, argument that Troy was a commercial metropolis. What I try to do now is try to transform or to translate uh, the viewpoint of Kaufman to the language of my argumentative system. That is description logic. The terminological box is, in this case is, is composed of two rules. The first one is the commercial metropolis. A, 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 a semantic rule is more or less like a definition. For example, we can read that a an object is considered a commercial metropolis if this object is of type place, if this object controls commercial route, and if this object has a, a port. Yeah? Um, and in the, uh, yes, and for example, I have seaport. Seaport is as well another definition. And for this, I have another rule. Uh, an object is of type seaport if it is a place, if it is located on the, co in, uh, on the co coast, if it, uh, if it has a, a seaport condition, and if we, if, uh, we found their uh, product for other places. Yeah? And in the same way, we can go deeper and deeper and describe all these objects, but it would be too much, of course. Now, the assert uh, assertional box. Uh, okay, I have just sentence uh, here. Uh, for example, uh, Kaufman say that Troy controlled the commercial route between the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. Uh, as well the route between Asia Minor and Southeast Europe. And he said that a uh, basic butch is a place close to Troy and had optimal condition for a seaport. And he found a uh, portary vestiges from other regions in this place. Hmm? Now uh, the argumentative, uh, argumentation network that I would have for him would be uh, in the top, uh, Troy was a commercial uh, metropolis and it has an indirect argument. This uh, indirect argument, uh, uh, this indirect argument uh, is uh, the deduction 
Uh, also for that, he used uh, the rule commercial metropolis and two believed, and uh, in all of them in combination, uh, from all of the, uh, there in combination, we can deduce that uh, Troy was a commercial metropolis. In the same way, for example, we have Besik Butch uh, was a seaport for Troy. For that, there is also a, a indirect argument uh, that is based in the rule uh, seaport. Now, uh, the, the viewpoint of uh, Professor Kolb, uh, he was not, for example, agree with the statement Troy was a commercial metropolis. What would happen if we uh, d uh, digitalize uh, the viewpoint of Kaufman and uh, Cor uh, Professor Kolb say, okay, I am not agree with that. The system will show that there is a contradiction, that Professor uh, Kaufman have another opinion about the statement of Kolb, and if he, he is, uh, that is not an uh, argument enough uh, for Kolb, uh, the system uh, would show the argument that justifies the statement. In this case would be uh, the rule commercial metropolis, maybe he's not agree with that, or maybe he's not agree with uh, Troy control Mediterranean Black Sea, and so on. The system will give, you autom will give you automatically the argument about the contradictions. Conclusions. <laughs> uh, okay, my system uh, can represent plurality somehow. Uh, uh, my system uh, improve as well or enable the improvement of the data quality. Why? Because I can enrich my own context, my own point of view uh, with a, a statement or belief from other uh, contexts, from other uh, individuals. There are no hierarchy. It means that uh, in my system there are not contexts more important than other. And uh, I think that if uh, we uh, digitalize, for example, uh, the knowledge of uh, Kaufman, uh, the argumentative analyze down in the book uh, that Ortroya could be done automatically. And my system is out of scope, uh, of scope when they believe are influenced by political reason or economical reason. And I think that is also a very important part of that or Troya of this book. That is my presentation. Thank you.